you're watching this, you have some interest in learning about investments. I personally think that learning about investing is literally the same as learning about life. And to have a full and happy life, it has to be your own. You can't copy anyone else, but you can certainly learn from them. Similarly, to be a good investor, your style has to be your own. So many investors with incredible track records did not get there by carbon copying anyone else. Of course, in life, we learn from many different people, and today's investors stand on the shoulders of some truly great men. But we would fail in our efforts to copy the process of these investors, as we can only be successful in any endeavor when our process is a natural part or a natural extension of ourselves. Right around the time I started Greenwood Investors, I remember Seth Klarman discussed how important it was for investors to have a specific process that they could rely upon in order to repeat successful investments. But at the time, I hadn't really defined my process and I was a bit embarrassed to admit it. My mentor, Wally Carucci, had his very own Italian process whereby disorganization and constant conversations led to him finding very actionable and timely investments. Unfortunately, I'm not as smart as Wally, so I had to start keeping track of things that were important to me in Excel. Over time, I kept adding things that just made sense from other people's investment letters and books. Um, and each investment that I made, each investment success, each investment mistake that I made, became new parts of criteria on which I could base future decisions. So in the beginning, you can't really process. You have to just go do and explore. If I had never dropped out, I would have never dropped in on that calligraphy class, and personal computers might not have the wonderful typography that they do. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college, but it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path and that will make all the difference. And so after the infamous 10,000 hours, infamous because Malcolm Gladwell talks about this point of being the point at which the artist, author, or the crafter becomes an expert at something. So after this 10,000 hours, I finally had a process. Of course, I've, I, I've continued to add criteria on a quarterly basis but the essence of it hasn't changed for a couple of years now. Through my own successes and mistakes, and of course through avid reading of the investing grades, I was able to come up with my own priorities of what made sense to me on an investment perspective. My own process was inspired by quantum mechanics, which has moved beyond cause and effect and has proved that reality is an actualization of a certain range of potentialities. Heisenberg has proved that nothing can be measured with any exactness, and so we've gotten rid of price targets and formulaic fair values. In short, Greenwood's process wants to maximize the investment preconditions for success and only make investments where potentialities are skewed to the upside. Because we've had so many successful special situations, I wanted to make sure that the process didn't ignore these cigar butts. But a high quality company trading for the same risk adjusted return profile as a cigar butt is clearly better. Still, some investors will spare no expense to buy quality. And so we've adjusted the standard return on invested capital measure to consider the fraction we are paying for the firm's invested capital. This ensures we'll never become so enamored with the business that we forget the most important thing in investing, valuation. It, it also helps us look for decent businesses that the market has just left for dead. So when we first acquired Fiat Chrysler, we were only paying 5-10% to 10 of replacement capital, which meant that meager returns have been transformed into outstanding returns. With Exor, we paid about a 40% discount to its invested capital, which is invested in other assets which are also trading below their replacement value. So we've normalized our process for quality, as well as many other factors like the management's track record, the ability of the business to compound over time, uh, the industry's barriers to entry, the, de the degree to which short-term investors are crowding into the stock, because the more crowded it is, the more irrational the behavior of the stock which is fine for a longer term investor like us, but it does ca cause us to widen the likely range of valuations that the company will trade for. Not one investment is perfect, though occasionally multiple factors come together to work towards the same goal and make the investment much more attractive than others. Charlie Munger calls this a Lollapalooza effect. So moving on from the factors and into the process, 
We get a lot of investment recommendations every day, and I am so thankful to all of you who passed along your best ideas. I add this flow into our framework that we've developed, and we're constantly force ranking our opportunity set against our portfolio in order to make sure we're not missing anything highly compelling and timely. It has also dramatically helped to improve our ability to trade. It basically forces me to be contrarian. We're not short-term traders because we don't think anyone can compete against the game without being on a prop desk of a broker-dealer, basically someone at the information crossroads. Uh, but it is very helpful to improve your short-term ability to execute trades. When the value dynamics don't change but the price of the stock drops, naturally the idea gets more compelling relative to everything else. Yet sometimes the price change can be quite smaller than the actual change in underlying value, and that opens up a nice trading opportunity. Even with the high flow of ideas we have, particularly relative to our small size, it's actually been the homegrown ideas that have performed best. They've all been run by 8 plus 100 CEOs, but that certainly hasn't been a major success factor. They've all had great risk adjusted return profiles, which we define as our relative downside to the upside in our base case in an extreme case, so four major scenarios for every company. Many of them have had great returns on invested capital, but some of them have just been mediocre, like FCA. But if you buy an asset that only generates a 10% return on invested capital, but you pay one-tenth the replacement cost, your initial ROIC is 100%. Over time, the reinvestment will re diminish the actual return, but we think it's a good way to avoid fooling yourself that you should spare no expense to buy a high-quality business. The best investments have had high barriers to entry and have been very uncrowded, particularly in the hedge fund community. They've all had fairly limited downside potential. Many of them had lower cyclicality, but still some of the best had substantial exposure to the economic cycle. And somewhat related to this, many of them were in businesses that will reliably generate cash flow that will allow them to compound their values quicker than others. We look at all of these factors and rank ideas according to how attractive they look within each factor. This results in a Lollapalooza effect, which Charlie Munger has described as multiple factors working towards the same goal. I really can't recommend strongly enough developing your own process, taking all of your own priorities and investments, putting them all on paper, having that dynamically easily updated in Excel so that you're consistently focusing your efforts on your best ideas. This will help you reduce your opportunity cost risk and if you look at the best investment track records, missing even just a couple of their best investments leads to a dramatic reduction of the overall return. It's funny, I've begged so many of my friends to implement this process because of what it did for my life and my productivity. And I've even, ex I've even shared my Excel model with some of these people and it's fallen on deaf ears. I'm amazed at how many people in this industry don't have a consistent process that they adhere to. Trust me, if and when you do this, your productivity and your trading decisions will substantially improve from here on out. And if you see any major factors that we're missing, I really invite you to reach out to me and I'll share some of the things that we've learned too along the way. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope you learned something useful today.